Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today. To always, always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day just to give Him some thanks right now. Just to give Him some praise right now. Ain't always give Him the glory. Today is the day, hallelujah, that the Lord has made. And I am so glad, so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Your praise is going to help you get out of your situation, my brothers and my sisters. And I know right now today, everything around you is dark. There's no, there's no light whatsoever. The enemy is hitting you from the north, east, west, and south. You don't know what's going on right now. Your mind is confused. You're asking God for questions. You're asking God for answers. But he's still being still. He's still being quiet. But it's your praise, my brothers. It is your praise, my sisters. It's going to get you through these hard and tough and difficult times. It is your praise, my brothers and my sisters. It's going to get you through these dark times. Because when you praise during your tough times, in your rough times, in your hardship, in your dark time, there's blessings and breakthroughs and miracles that's on the other side. The sun will shine on you sooner or later. So that's why I'm always encouraging right now today to always praise. Praise is an everyday thing. That's what motivates me, my brothers and my sisters, even in my dark time right now. That's why I'm always thanking him. That's why I'm always praising. That's why I'm always glorifying me because there's not going to stop me from getting what God has already ordained and already had my name on. We have a blessing with our name on it. We have breakthroughs with our name on it. We have miracles with our name on it. But you will not see it if you can't do the one simplest thing. That's praise. You got to praise too because that is victory through your praise. There's healing in your praise. There's promotion in your praise. There's open doors in your praise, my brothers and my sisters. You got to take the limits off God. And when you take the limits off God by praising and worshiping, he said, that son of mine, that daughter of mine, I can trust him. I know they're in a tough situation right now. I know things, it seem like it's never going to work. I know things like now, they seem like it's falling apart. But when things seem like they're falling apart, they actually is falling together. You continue to do what you got to do. Praise, my brothers. Praise, my sisters. Praise through your dark times right now. Praise through your hurting times right now. Praise through your suffering times. Your hurting times and your dark times. Praise, praise, praise is going to get you through I'm telling right now, my sisters, I'm telling that right now, dear my brothers. If I can do it, you can do it. When you see me on here and I'm praising, that's why I'm praising. If I can pray through the good times, I can pray through the bad times. But it's the bad times and the rough times and the dark times that's going to get me over this hump. It's the reason why that we're in this predicament right now because God has already ordained us for us to get to the other side. He said the sun will shine again. And when the sun is going to shine, it's going to shine on you, my sisters. It's going to shine on you, my brothers, because of your praise. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for this opportunity, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you allow me to be the overseer of your flock right now. Father God, thank you for allowing me and my brothers and my sister to come together to fellowship in your house to worship in your house, and to have service in your house. Father God, your word tells us in the book of Matthew, verse 18 and 19, where two or more gather in your name, hallelujah, that you are in the midst of things. So, Father God, I know that you're in the midst of our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now. I know that you're in the midst of our telephones, our iPad, our laptops, our desktops, or whatever gadgets that we have, or whatever gadgets that we're using. We know that you're having your way with us right now. Father God, you continue to touch us right now. Father God, you know every last one I need. You know every last one I concern us, God. And Father God, we give you the thanks right now. We give you the praise right now. We're giving you the glory in your house right now today, God. 
God, we're here today to let you know that we can't do it without you, Jesus. We are counting on you right now. We are depending on you right now. And we rely on you right now. Your house is a house of prayer and praise. So that's what we are doing in your house. We are praying and we are praising in your house right now today, Father God. Father God, we take no credit, God, that's about to go down in your house because all the credit goes and belongs to you. Father God, we worship your holy name in your house, God. Father God, we're here today to let you know that we are available for praise, that we are available for service, that we are available for the kingdom, that we are available right now today for us to continue to do our Father's will, that we are available to serve and honor and worship you and magnify your name and to exalt your holy name. We are available for you, Jesus. Oh God, we tell you right now today, God, to touch us right now. Father God, you know what we are going through. You know exactly what we are facing, God. But God, we are seeking you during this time. We are praising you. And we got our faith and our trust and our hope in you, God. So God, we know that we can never fall. We'll never be disappointed by our faith and our trust and hope, God. Father God, allow your faithful Holy Spirit to intervene right now today in my brothers and my sisters' life, even my life right now today. Open our eyes right now today, God, let us see what we need to see. Open our ears right now today, God, let us hear what we need to hear. And Father God, we want to just thank you right now. I say, God, we just want to say thank you right now. I say, Father God, we just want to say thank you right now. In your holy precious mighty name, let the church say amen and amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And I'm here today on behalf of myself, my brothers, my sisters. And yes, Father God, we fell short today. We even made a couple mistakes today. God, we're not perfect at all, God. God, we're only human, God. And God, we're here right now today to repent of our sins. Father God, I'm asking you, please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters right now, for every anything, God, that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters right now, for every anything, God, that we done wrong, God, that was not set right in your heart. Father God, please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters right now, for anything, God, that we participated in on our mind, God, that was not of your will. Please forgive us, God. Wash us clean, God. Purify us, God. Clean us up as white as snow today, God. Father God, I want to say thank you, Father God, for forgiving us for our sins. I want to say thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the second chance, and thank you for the opportunity. We thank you, we thank you, in your holy, precious, mighty name. Amen and amen. And before I get started, hallelujah. I always like to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Over oh, Heavenly Father God, I just came thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful, blessed day today. I can't thank enough for this word. I can't thank enough for this anointing message right now. I can't thank enough for the air that we're able to breathe right now today. I can't thank enough for your grace and your mercy. I can't thank enough for our help and our strength. I can't thank enough for the God for your words and your promises. I just can't thank enough for the God for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I can't thank enough for the Holy Spirit right now. I just can't thank enough for the God because you're making a way out of no way. I just can't thank enough for the God because you are a healer and you are also a provider. I just can't thank enough for the God because we can always call, count, depend, and rely on your holy, precious name right now today. I just can't thank enough for the God for who you are, what you have done, what you're about to do. I just can't think of Father God how you moving mountains right now today on the behalf of my brothers, my sister, even myself right now. I just can't think of Father God because you are still in control and you are still in charge. I just can't think of Father God because you are the you are the real deal. I just can't think of Father God for our blessing. I can't think of our breakthrough. I can't think of our anointing. I can't think of our deliverance. I can't think of our double portion. I can't think of our more than enough. I can't think of the open doors. I can't thank enough for the door that you have closed. I can't thank enough for the connection. I can't thank enough for the resources. I can't thank enough for your faithfulness. I can't thank enough for your love. I just can't thank enough for the God that who you are. I just can't thank enough for the God because you always keep it real. I just can't thank enough for the God because you said that you will never leave us or forsake us. I just can't thank enough for the God because you're a man that you should not lie, that you stand on your words and you stand on your promises. Thank you, Jesus. I just can't thank enough for the God for the overflow. I can't thank enough for the life that you about to 
forgive us. I just can't think of Father God that you about to open up the floodgates of heaven and that you about to pour the blessing on us, my uh, Father God, that we're going to better receive it all. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you and I glorify and I magnify and I exalt your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough, even in my dark time, even in my suffering time, even in my hurting time, even in my pain time, I still let you know, Jesus, that I can't thank you. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No weapon formed against my brothers and sisters will ever prosper. It will never work. We're going to give you the praise, God. We're going to give you the glory in your house. Regardless what we are going through, regardless what we are facing, we are going to praise your holy name. We ain't going nowhere. We are too legit to quit for all this. Hallelujah. We thank you in your house. We praise you in your house. We worship you in your house. We give you the glory right now today in your house, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I believe today that this word today, this anointing message for somebody today. Excuse me, my brother and sister. <laughs> I'm here today to talk about how many people are hating on you, how many people are envious towards you, and how many people are jealous of you. And the reason why they're hating on you, the reason why they're envious of you, and the reason why they're jealous of you is because one thing, your success. Your success comes from your commitment with Jesus. Your success comes from your dedication with Jesus. Your success comes from your hunger with Jesus in your thirst. And when you have that, you all going to have somebody that's always hating and jealous and envy of somebody. That's why a lot of you right now today have so many haters right now today. You don't even realize it. Some of you have haters. You don't even know people who hating on you. You got people who hating on you for some reason that you didn't even do. It's because of your commitment. It's because of your dedication. They see your grind. They see your hustle. They see what you doing for the Lord. And they are finding ways to hate on you, my brothers, my sisters. They see that your marriage is better than theirs. So they try to find a way to try to steal your husband. They try to find a way to steal your wife. It's because they wish their husband was like yours. They wish that their wife was like yours. See, that's what the enemy loved to do. The enemy loved to steal, kill, and destroy. But the word of God tells us in the book of John verse 10 that God said, I will come reverse that and give you full of life. So what did the enemy try to do? God's going to take what the enemy tried to do and he's going to use that same weapon on him. Are you following me what I'm saying? There's a lot of nobodies right now. That's hating and jealous of everybody. And the reason why they hating on you, the reason why they jealous of you, because they don't want nothing. They want what you have. When they can't have what you got, that's when the hating come. That's when the jealousy come. That's when the envy come. But some of us right now today, we don't keep our eyes on them. And we lose focus. We lose focus. We always got to pay attention. Of the, of the enemy schemes. And I know they can come through slick. I know they can come through crafty. That's who they are. But one thing I know. Success come. When you're from your commitment with God. Success come. When you got your dedication to God. Success come when you are consistent. And you are persistent. And when they see that you are consistent at something. And when they see that you are persistent at something. You better get ready. Because here come your haters. Here come the jealous people. Here come the envious people. 
Yes, right now. They're at their round table right now today just talking about you. Gossiping about you. This is whispering about you because you are doing something that they ain't doing. When God said he gave every last one of his children the what the ability to make something happen. And he tells that in the book of Deuteronomy verse 8, verse 18. God gives every last one of us 24 hours. And that 24 hours, it is you who was making something happen. It is you who are putting something out. But you have the haters who ain't doing that. You have the jealous people who ain't doing that. And you have the envious people who's not doing nothing. And it's surprising how so many people right now today that is so jealous of your marriage right now. They jealous. And they sit back and they watch. They say, man, how can she have a husband like that who don't mistreat her, don't do her wrong, and don't cheat on her? Well, my boyfriend, my husband, he's doing exactly that. So at that moment, at that point right then, at that point and at that moment right then and there, it is hating on your marriage, it is jealousy on your marriage, and it's envy. You got a lot of people see that you happy in your marriage, and they can't stand to see you happy. They can't stand to see that smile on your face. There's a lot of sisters right now today. Got a good man at home. And there's always going to be that little, that little hating woman, that envious woman, and that jealous woman. Try to come through what you worry about, what you're talking about. Might try to wear something little, little some um, um, inappropriate to your house. But the thing is, she is so jealous of you, my sisters. She's so jealous because what your husband do for you. She is so jealous because your husband always there, and she have her eyes on that, and she can't stand that. She see that she see that your husband is committed and dedicated to you. And when a woman sees that and she don't have that, jealousy come, envy come, hatred come. And the same thing that goes with you on your craft. When somebody sees that you are consistent and persistent, why do you think so many people right now today is not even cheering you on? They're not believing in you. They're saying somebody's doing something, the same thing that you do. Oh, you know, so-and-so do that. I want to know, do they need an agent? I want to know, do they need a hand? I want to know, could it, is, is there any way I can help them out with? But they see that you grinding. They see that you put in some work, but they're not asking you, do you need an agent? They're not asking you, do you need a helping hand? They're not asking you, is there anything that we can do to help you? Because they are jealous of you. They're envious towards you. There's always a lot of nobodies hating and envy of somebody. And that success is a powerful word. And when God give you what your heart desire. He's giving you what your success is. And when your haters see that success that's on you, because right now your haters see that, the jealous people see that, and the people, that's why they're so envious of you, because they see success on you. They see success when you walk. They see success when you talk. They see success when you're in your circle. They see success when you're on your grind. They see success when you're hustling. They see success in your marriage. They see success around you, and when they see it, they can't stand it. How I know? I'm glad you asked, man. Can you please turn your Bible to Psalms 20, verse 4 and 5? And then we're going to go to Psalms 37, 4 and 5. Psalms 20, verse 4 and 5. If you have it, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. May he, who is he? Jesus. May he give you the desire of your heart and make what? All your plans succeed. He didn't say some of your plans. He didn't say half of your plans. He didn't say one third of your plans. He didn't say one fourth of your plan. But he said all your plans succeed. Mm. He said we will shout. God is saying that y'all both going to come together and y'all going to shout together. Isn't that so amazing when God said that we will? He didn't say you're going to get some of this credit too. I'm not going to get all the glory out of it. I'm going to share some of my glory. And I'm going to share some of this credit with you because you gave me your heart. You was committed to me. You was dedicated to me. You was hungry for me. You was thirsty for me. So I gave you what your heart desired. And when I gave you what your heart desired, he said that all your plans will be succeed. 
So once you give your heart to Jesus, or the next, you are already successful, my brothers and my sisters. That's why you have a lot of nobody that's hating on you right now because everybody don't want nothing. Everybody don't want success because everybody don't want to commit and be dedicated to Jesus. You got to be committed to Jesus. You got to be dedicated to Jesus. You got to be hungry for Jesus. You got to be thirsty for Jesus for God to give you what your heart desires so all your plans will succeed. So when God gives you but your heart desire, you are already successful, my brothers, my sisters. Some of you right now today, you got to say, I am successful, even though that you're going through a dark patch right now. Even though that you're in the midst of a storm, even though that you're in the wilderness, even though that you're going through a lot of pain and suffering and struggle, it's a reason why that you're going through that. Successful people have to go through that. Everybody's not built built like you, my sisters. Everybody's not built like you, my brother, to go through that because everybody's not committed to Jesus. But Jesus said, we will shout together. He said, we will shout for joy when you are what? Victorious. Victory comes in dark time. Jesus do things in the dark situation. Right now, you're in a dark situation right now, my sisters. Right now, you're in a dark situation right now, today, my brothers. But it is victory in that dark time. If it was light, then you'll see what Jesus was doing. But when it's dark, you can't see that way. You got to walk by faith and not by sight. So when you walk by faith, you got to know, tell yourself, I am victorious no matter what. Even though it's dark, you got to say, I am successful no matter what. Because he already gave you what your heart desired. He already said that all your plans will succeed. Look at many promises that Jesus gave you. He gave what your heart desired. The first promise. He said, all your plans will succeed. That's the second promise. And he said, the third promise, you will shout for joy when you are victorious. That's three promises that he told you. No, he gave some more. He said, it will lift up your banners in the name of our God. Mm. That's four. He go to the fifth one. May the Lord grant all your requests. So that's five promises that he gave you. Five. You gonna tell me that five people are hating on you? Yes, look at the five things he told you. People gonna envy you towards you that. People will be jealous of you towards that. They will hate on you because of that. Because you see the five promises that's on your life. When you have that many promises on your life, my brothers, when you have that many promises on your life, my sisters, you gonna always have more people against you. But God said, no matter who against you, long as I'm for you, you can have a million and thirty-eight million people against you. Long as I'm for you, you still are victorious. You are already successful. I already gave what your heart desire. We will shop together, and all your plans is already done. It's already request because what your commitment, your dedication, your hunger, and your thirst for Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you have a lot of nobodies. You're hating on somebody. You have a lot of nobodies that is jealous of somebody. You have a lot of nobodies that is envious towards somebody because you don't want nothing. You can't blame him. You can't blame her because they're successful. That's your fault. That's your fault. Get mad at him. Get mad at her. That's your fault. Amen. Amen. So can you please turn your Bible to Psalms 37, verse 4 and 5. Psalms 37, verse 4 and 5. If you haven't, let the church say amen. Amen. It says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you what? The desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. And he will what? Do this. He will make you righteousness. Shine like the dawn. The justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Look how many promises he gave you that. Delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you what your what? Your heart desire. He said, commit to him. Once you commit to him, that means he's already he's already giving you what your heart desire. He's looking at a commitment. Once you commit to Jesus, Jesus already have everything. He have he have unlimited resources. When you commit to Jesus, he has unlimited resources and he want to give it to you. And when the haters know that, when the envious people know that, and when the jealous people know that, that's why they are jealous and envious towards you. It's because they see your commitment that you have for Jesus. 
Amen. The enemy knows what time it is. So when you commit to him, you are dedicated to him. He's already given you what you already wanted and more. If he just tell you right now today what he's going to do for you, you won't even believe him. He tell you in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, he said, I'll just tell you right now what I was going to do for you. He said, you won't even believe me because of your commitment, your dedication, your hunger, and your thirst that you have for Jesus. He said, telling you right now today, you have a lot of nobody that's hating on you right now. It's because you are successful. Tell yourself right now that they say, I am successful right now. I might not see anything happening right now. I might be in a dark situation right now. But I know that my God will get me through this. I will prevail. Victorious is in my name. Victory is in my marriage. Victory is in my finances. Victory is in my business. Victory is in my ministry. Why it is? It's because of one thing, that commitment. Once you committed to Jesus... He gave us your heart desire because Jesus knows the heart. And once he knows your heart and he searched your heart and he tests your heart and it's still beating, it's still beating and bleeding Jesus, he said, I'm going to give you this and more. I have people that's building houses right now in your name that you didn't even ask or pray for. I have people who's building billions in your name that you didn't even ask or pray for. It's because of your commitment. That's why they're hating on you. That's why they're jealous of you. And that's why they're envious of you. Because they see your commitment that you have with Jesus and they don't have it. Come on, somebody ain't telling me nothing. You are nobody always hating on somebody. Stop hating on people. Stop being jealous of people. Stop being envious of people and get committed to Jesus right now. If you commit to Jesus, you won't be hating on nobody. On the, on the enemy hate. So they let, me, they let me know who your father is. They let me know who your friend is. They let me know who your cousin is. They let me know who your uncle is. And his name is the devil. So you some kin to him. Because he's the only person that's hate, hating people. Your spirit is inside of him. Why think the devil so mad at you right now today? It's because of your commitment. Why you think he's trying to attack your marriage? Why you trying, why you think he's trying to attack your business? And your ministry? Because he already know that you're already successful. He will not be coming at you like this right here if you was not successful. He will not be coming to you like this if they didn't see, if he didn't know what God is about to bring you into, my brothers and my sisters. He's doing it because he knows who you are. And he have little agents and he have little minions right now that he talked to and he send them on their little on he send them on their little mission. He said, I want you to hate on him. I want you to be jealous of her. And I want you to be envious of him and her because they are successful. And they say, okay, uncle, okay, daddy, that's what we're going to do. Think about the people that's jealous of you and envious towards you. It's because of your commitment. It's because they see success on you. You are successful more than what you can even imagine, my brothers and my sisters. I say that you are more successful more than you even can imagine. And if this works for you and you know that God is talking to you, Give him some thanks and praise in the house of the Lord right now. Amen. Amen. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. But I was praying the simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always put Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever see their face. Prayer help and prayer is a powerful thing and it changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my sisters and brothers. I just ask y'all guys to continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. This serving minister LT, I love y'all. Stay blessed. Amen.